40 Best Thoughts of Sidney Smith, 1771-1845 1. No furniture so charming as books. 2. Fate cannot harm me, I have dined today. 3. Praise is the best diet for us, after all. 4. We cultivate literature on a little oatmeal. 5. Live always in the best company when you read. 6. Looked as if she had walked straight out of the ark. 7. Take short views, hope for the best, and trust in God. 8. Ah, you flavor everything, you are the vanilla of society. 9. Avoid shame, but do not seek glory, nothing so expensive as glory. 10. Great men hallow a whole people and lift up all who live in their time. 11. He was a one book man. Some men have only one book in them, others, a library. 12. Never give way to melancholy, resist it steadily, for the habit will encroach. 13. You find people ready enough to do the Samaritan, without the oil and tuppence. 14. It is the greatest of all mistakes to do nothing because you can only do little. 15. It is always right that a man should be able to render a reason for the faith that is within him. 16. Madame, I have been looking for a person who disliked gravy all my life, let us swear eternal friendship. 17. Correspondences are like small clothes before the invention of suspenders, it is impossible to keep them up. 18. Life is to be fortified by many friendships. To love, and to be loved, is the greatest happiness of existence. 19. Thank God for tea. What would the world do without tea? Question mark How did it exist? I am glad I was not born before tea. 20. Among the smaller duties of life I hardly know any one more important than that of not praising where praise is not due. 21. Manners are the shadows of virtues, the momentary display of those qualities which our fellow creatures love, and respect. 22. Macaulay is like a book in breeches. He has occasional flashes of silence, that make his conversation perfectly delightful. 23. Have the courage to be ignorant of a great number of things, in order to avoid the calamity of being ignorant of everything. 24. When I hear any man talk of an unalterable law, the only effect it produces upon me is to convince me that he is an unalterable fool. 25. Heat, ma'am. I said, it was so dreadful here, that I found there was nothing left for it but to take off my flesh and sit in my bones. 26. He has spent all his life in letting down empty buckets into empty wells, and he is frittering away his age in trying to draw them up again. 27. In composing, as a general rule, run your pen through every other word you have written. You have no idea what vigor it will give your style. 28. Dean Swift's rule is as good for women as for men, never to talk above a half minute without pausing, and giving others an opportunity to strike in. 29. Let every man be occupied, and occupied in the highest employment of which his nature is capable, and die with the consciousness that he has done his best. 30. It is the safest to be moderately base, to be flexible in shame, and to be always ready for what is generous, good, and just, when anything is to be gained by virtue. 31. Marriage resembles a pair of shears, so joined that they cannot be separated, often moving in opposite directions, yet always punishing anyone who comes between them. 32. Every increase of knowledge may possibly render depravity more depraved, as well as it may increase the strength of virtue. It is in itself only power, and its value depends on its application. 33. Preaching has become a byword for long and dull conversation of any kind, and whoever wishes to imply, in any piece of writing, the absence of everything agreeable and inviting, calls it a sermon. 34. The fact is that in order to do anything in this world worth doing, we must not stand shivering on the bank thinking of the cold and the danger, but jump in and scramble through as well as we can. 35. 
The object of preaching is, constantly to remind mankind of what mankind are constantly forgetting, not to supply the defects of human intelligence, but to fortify the feebleness of human resolutions. 36. Truth is its, justice is, handmaid, freedom is its child, peace is its companion, safety walks in its steps, victory follows in its train, it is the brightest emanation from the gospel, it is the attribute of God. 37. A great deal of talent is lost to the world for the want of a little courage. Every day sends to their graves a number of obscure men who have only remained obscure because their timidity has prevented them from making a first effort. 38. The truth is, that most men want knowledge, not for itself, but for the superiority which knowledge confers, and the means they employ to secure this superiority, are as wrong as the ultimate object, for no man can ever end with being superior, who will not begin with being inferior. 39. But now persecution is good, because it exists, every law which originated in ignorance and malice, and gratifies the passions from whence it sprang. We call the wisdom of our ancestors, when such laws are repealed, they will be cruelty and madness, till they are repealed, they are policy and caution. 40. It is a very wise rule in the conduct of the understanding, to acquire early a correct notion of your own peculiar constitution of mind, and to become well acquainted, as a physician would say, with your idiosyncrasy. Are you an acute man, and see sharply for small distances? Or are you a comprehensive man, and able to take in, wide and extensive views into your mind? Does your mind turn its ideas into wit? Or are you apt to take a common sense view of the objects presented to you? Have you an exuberant imagination, or a correct judgment? Are you quick, or slow? Accurate, or hasty? A great reader, or a great thinker? It is a prodigious point gained if any man can find out where his powers lie, and what are his deficiencies, if he can contrive to ascertain what nature intended him for, and such are the changes and chances of the world, and so difficult is it to ascertain our own understandings, or those of others, that most things are done by persons who could have done something else better. If you choose to represent the various parts in life by holes upon a table, of different shapes, some circular, some triangular, some square, some oblong, and the persons acting these parts by bits of wood of similar shapes, we shall generally find that the triangular person has got into the square hole, the oblong into the triangular, and a square person has squeezed himself into the round hole. The officer and the office, the doer and the thing done, seldom fit so exactly, that we can say they were almost made for each other.